we're here at Whiston House for this company biologists workshop on transgenerational epigenetic inheritance. Um, can we just start by defining what you actually mean by transgenerational epigenetic inheritance? Uh, transgenerational means across generations. Uh, and inheritance means inheritance, but uh, the reason we wanted to call it transgenerational epigenetic inheritance is because it's to do with changes um, that can be transmitted from one generation to the next that are not DNA sequence based. So that's where the epigenetic uh, part comes in. And there's good evidence that these phenomena occur? So in, in some organisms, very good evidence. So plants, and uh, as we've been hearing at this meeting, uh, uh, worms, uh, and possibly also in flies, in the fruit fly, Drosophila. In mammals, um, in particular mice, we know that there are some uh, what we call epi-alleles. There are some uh, loci that are epigenetically marked, and this epigenetic marking seems to be propagated from one generation to the next. Uh, but there aren't that many of them, it seems, and uh, it's not clear how they arise and and whether they're doing anything in particular or not. So it's been quite, um, I would say, controversial field. And uh, to try and, and sort out um, what we do actually know about whether it really happens mm -hmm. and in which organisms it's been, it's been well documented to happen, uh, we wanted to bring together people to discuss this, uh, the, the specialists, and to, to work out what the best models are to yep. address this. And to find out, indeed, if it does exist in mammals, uh, could it happen in humans? And if it happens in humans, what could the consequences be? So it's, as you say, it's a, a controversial and a very sort of um, timely topic and a timely field. And you've brought together sort of quite a, a diverse group of people here from, um, you know, wet lab scientists who are doing the experiments with the plants and worms and, and mice through to epidemiologists, theoretical biologists and, and philosophers, in fact. So mm. what do you think that that brings to, to the meeting and, and what was the idea behind that? It was absolutely key to bring these people together. That, that really was the point because uh, people have been talking about these phenomena in different contexts. Uh, you know, the, the wet lab biologists are working on their favourite model organism uh, and then some of the philosophers discussing things in a more sort of theoretical way. And um, I haven't yet been to a meeting where all of these different um, sets of people are brought together to really discuss what the issues are. I thought it was fantastic. I mean, for me, the, I think one of the biggest challenges right now is the amount that we travel. So the small format allows intimate, very relaxed, open conversation, but in a time frame that is much easier to fit into your schedule than a five-day meeting, for instance. Yeah, I thought exactly the same. It was uh, uh, so intimate and, um, and also it brought together people from really different fields. Uh, they even use different jargon and words to, to, to study the same, the same concept, so it was really important for collaboration. For example, I think we are going to collaborate now on new projects, so already it's, it's a success. Well, I enjoyed it very much, uh, many aspects of it. I mean, it was uh, very intense. I learned a lot, and uh, it was in the most fabulous and privileged setting that I've ever been. I really enjoyed the meeting. It's been great to meet so many experts in the field that I wouldn't normally have access to. As one of the organisers of this um, workshop, can you just tell me a little bit about how you're finding it so far and how you're finding this environment? It's great. I mean, I really, I'm, I'm amazed. I feel a little bit, I'm, my research is somewhat outside of this area, although I've really gotten into thinking more about transgenerational effects. I mean, obviously the germline is transgenerational and that's what we work on. And I just have learned so much and so much has been clarified. And I have to say that even some really bad prejudices I had... Um, are a little missed, <laughs> so uh, um, that, or, or at least uh, I understand where where people are coming from, which I think is really interesting. Which only happens when you can talk to people and you don't just read papers or you know you can't read everything. Anyways. So the way these meetings work is that um, we bring together. 20 very prominent invited speakers, but also have an opportunity for a very small number, about 10 um, early career scientists, to come along to this meeting as well. How do you think they've contributed to the, to the workshop? 
I think it was actually terrific. So I was first, I was thinking like, oh, only 10, you know, and, uh, uh, but uh, I, I actually think, first of all, their talks have been very yeah. good, and many of them have integrated very nicely into the group, and I think for them, it's been an enormous uh, exposure. Yep. And also, um, today we were talking with one of the beginning graduate students, yeah. you know, about his thesis project. And yeah. so here were like three, four faculty who now became, you know, at least a lunchtime mentors. It's definitely given me a really good perspective on, of the field and all the various models that we can use. I'm hoping I'll be able to collaborate with some people in the future and potentially even look for them for um, job opportunities in the future. <laughs> I think that I made a lot of contacts and also I uh, changed a little bit of the concepts that I had before. For me, plenty, for sure. P possibilities is the biggest thing. I think that inter interdisciplinary mix, but that's not too interdisciplinary. Almost every talk you hear about either a technique that you don't know or a model organism that provides an enormous advantage um, or just a simply a different way of thinking things about things, a different approach. And especially juxtaposed with some real true leaders in the field, upcoming leaders and junior scientists. I think that the dialogue, really junior people not being afraid to ask something, senior people conceptualizing, simplifying ideas, uh, the communication, I think it doesn't get more fluid really. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better, so I have nothing to add. You <laughs> <laughs>